Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's yet another exciting edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. Today is a special edition. It's my birthday, and I'm excited to share my birthday also learning. You know, when you're a firm believer in something, every day is a good day to do what you believe in. And capacity building, competence development is something I'm passionate about. And I like the fact that on a Friday evening, when we could be grooving, enjoying life, and also dedicating and committing it to something special. And today we have a very special edition because we are speaking about a topic I'm very much fascinated and interested in. Today we'll be looking at organizational design and development. Organizational design and development. And we have a very special person to me who will be admini facilitating this session in the person of Omo Joku Wakolo of Peyemi. I'll introduce her briefly so that you can appreciate the quality of talent, the caliber and timber of the personality that will be handling this special HR mentorship learning series. I will just, in the next one minute, read out a profile, but do me a favor, touch base with your colleague, your friend, your team member. This is one session nobody should be without. Currently, she has been working with Philip Outsourcing and she is the head of recruitment with this beautiful organization all of us have had interface with at one point or the other. Prior to, to this, she spent about three years at Full Concepts PLC, where she sat in the capacity of recruitment lead. And before this, she worked as a STEM technical recruiter, and she worked in this capacity for about three years. She also has about five years robust experience working with ICS outsourcing, which is another organization. I've also had multiple encounters with them. And she served in various capacities in this space of five years. She was recruitment executive. She was HR consultant. She was a human resources officer where she focused on background check and compliance. And of course, before this, she had years work experience with International Academy for the Gifted, where she also the human resources project officer. Okay, by way of education, she's very, very well. She has a master's in management, planning, and policy from the Premier University. The first and okay, she also had her first degree, University of Adwekiti, where she had a Bachelor's of Science combined honors with education in economics. All right, you can see that she is well educated. She's a member of the Tara Institute of Personal Management of Nigeria. She's an associate member. She also has certification business process of sourcing limited. And she has done several trainings with many reputable organizations. I believe we have our pen, our daughter, you know, ready so that we can tap, so that we can unlock so that we can drink from this fountain of knowledge. And she's doing this pro bono, free of charge. This is what wonderful, this is marvelous, and I'm excited. Over to you, Okoyemi, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Mr. Oluyemi. And happy birthday again. Should I sing for you? Happy birthday to you. I pray God will continue to increase your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And thank you for the platform, HR Mentorship. Thank you for having me, everyone. I really appreciate you all for coming online. So uh, we are starting bravely. But before we start, I would like to introduce the topic. What we are going to be discussing today, tonight, OK, it's tonight. Let me call it tonight. It's not something new. But in HR, we like to use big terms to compound the whole situation and make it look like, oh, this is really ambiguous. I can't do it. But I'm telling you today, after tonight, after this course, we should be able to say, oh, organizational design is at my fingertips. It's going to be simplified. And I'm not coming to bore us with uh, quotations and jargons from 
uh, online authors and all. So it's just going to be straight to the point. Now let's start. So before we start, I want us to know that I am not an island of knowledge. As such, I am disclaiming all credence to all the material used in this, uh, all the materials used in this presentation. I am standing on the shoulder of giants like the likes of uh, Professor Adeyemi Ajayi, Ulu Yemi, and other international authors to prepare this presentation. So they have the rightful owners to all the content of this presentation. And uh, I am disclaiming that this presentation is for commercial purpose. It is solely for knowledge sharing and nothing more. So if you see me quoting you verbatim without giving you credence, please pardon me. It's just for the sake of the lecture to make it flow. Thank you so much for having me once again. So we start. So we're going to be focusing on concept of organizational design and development. Then we'll be, we'll be, uh, we'll be looking into the interrelationship between organizational development and design. Then that will take us to looking at the process of organizational design and development combined together. So I'm starting now. I want us to know that this is not without any objective. I presume that after this interaction, we should be able to understand organizational design and development as two different concepts. So we are not going to model it up after this lecture that organizational design and development are just one single term. They are separated. We have organizational development and we have organizational uh, design, but both are complementing each other. Then after this, we should be able to understand how HR value chains align with organizational design and development. What do I mean by HR value chains? What we do every day in nature, our recruitment, compensation and benefit, performance management, talent management, call it anything, every activities of human resources, how it aligns with organizational design and development. Then we should be able, after this interaction, we should be able to disrupt existing structure whether in your workplace or in your group to create a structure that will match the business. Then we should be able to drive organizational development and also sustain the outcome of organizational development and design process. Now let's start. I'm going to be starting with the concept of organizational design and development. What do I mean by concept, conceptualization? I'll be giving it, I'll be explaining what they mean in the most simplest way and from the summary from, uh, with the summaries I've gotten from authors. So let's go ahead. Um, the first definition I'm giving to organizational design, I'm seeing it as a process of designing a structural template for aligning performance. A, uh, for aligning a pool of resources for achieving common goals. Process of designing a structural template. I know we all know what template is. For aligning a pool of resources. What do I mean by that pool of resources? People, uh, tangible and not tangible resources like people, uh, competencies. We have our work tools, organizational vision and all. We still go deep into that for achieving a common goal, which is the organizational goal. Then we'll be, we are seeing organizational design as the process of rearranging workflow, procedures, structures, and systems to fit current business realities to goals, and then develop, developing plans to implement the new change changes. So what do I mean by rearranging? It means for there to be an organizational design, uh, not necessarily new, there may be an existing design, a structure in place, which we need to rearrange. So this second definition is speaking to an existing organization that we need to disrupt and rearrange in order to fit 
current business realities. Let's see what the third definition is saying. The third definition is giving us the insight to organizational design as architecture, which provides the framework to which an organization aims to realize its qualities as specified in its philosophy statement. What do I, what do I mean by that philosophy statement? The vision, philosophy statement of an organization comprises the vision, mission, and the core values. So the definition goes ahead to say, it provides the infrastructure into which business processes are deployed and ensured that the organization's core competencies are realized across the business processes in the organization. So these three definitions is still speaking to one particular concept, which is structure, structure, structure. So it means when we are thinking of design, the major content of design we are looking at is a structure. A template is still a structure. A workflow is still a structure. A framework is still a structure. Architecture is still a structure. It's just synonyms repeatedly. So whenever we hear organizational design, I want it to be at the back of our mind that we are mostly speaking with the organizational structure, which is classification of people and the task. What do I mean by that task? The job description and job, uh, job responsibilities of each and everyone in the organization and how they are arranged from the top management to the bottom line. So that will take us to the key elements of organizational design. According to the definition, uh, we have mentioned its structure, size. When we are talking of the structure, we are looking at the size of the organization. So what is the organ organogram? What is the organogram speaking to? How does it look like? Is it a one-man business? Is it, is it a medium business? Is it a big business, a big organization? Whatever we want to do with organizational structure, the first we consider is structure. And there are some structures that are affiliated to external environments. Like uh, when we have shareholders buying into the business, we have uh, international organizations financing the business. That's another structure entirely. So if there is going to be an organizational design in that way, we should always put into uh, cognizance the size of the business. Now let's move ahead. Chain of command. Chain of command is just talking to the reporting line from the HR officer, to HR associate, from HR associate to HR team lead, HR team lead to HR, HR managers, and so on and so forth, to the HR director and to the MD CEO. In every organization, there's always a chain of reports, reporting line. It begins with the line manager and it goes on and on and on in an organization. So that's where you see a, a, a group of people with such a chain of command, like, oh, how an information should flow, how a report should flow. We are speaking to an organization with a design that has a structure. Now, span of control. What do I mean by this span of control? Span of control is speaking to the numbers of subordinates a manager or a supervisor supervises or manages. So, when you see an organization whereby a, a manager is responsible for either one or two, if a group of people or a small business is speaking to a design, that means there's, even though it is not structured, it is not properly structured, it is speaking to the fact that there's an existing structure. Then work specialization. What do I mean by that work specialization? In every organization, we have expertise who have who, who have uncommon knowledge, who, are, who can add a special skill, who, who can add special skills. Taking for an instance, now in my organization, I specialize, even though I can do every other aspect of HR, I'm specializing on recruitment. And I, we have others too who are specializing on performance management and know. So when we have these specialties clearly specified in an organization, it's speaking to us that there's a structure in place and there's a, there's a design in place. Then we have departmentalization. This departmentalization is talking to the categorizing of, categorization of people according to what they do. People with similar skills from the um, entry point to the mastery point. 
So that is when uh, taking, for instance, in HR department, we are from HR interns to the HR director, for instance. So that is departmentalization, whether it's intern or the HR director. But they have one thing in common, and that is the HR skill. So when we see people working in line to achieve a common goal in an organization, we try to departmentalize them, put them in a group and category so that uh, they can perform opt optimally. Then authority and responsibility. Authority means the extent of delegation, extent of delegation of uh, tasks, responsibilities, speaks to commitments. When you are when a particular task is delegated, how committed is the delegatee, and how committed is the person delegating to see that that task is as, 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 as uh, achievable. Because uh, despite the fact that a particular task is delegated, the person delegating the task is still accountable for the success of such task. So these are the elements, key elements of organizational design. And that will take us to demystify organizational development as well. Don't forget I mentioned the key word in organizational design, that is the structure. Even the chain of command, the span of control, work specialization, everything is still speaking to a particular structure, drawn, a framework, a template, an architect. We'll still need that as we move on in the course of this interaction. Now, this is organizational development. When we are talking of development, what should, I'm not really dwelling much on organization because we all know that organization is a group of people who are bound because they want to achieve a common goal, whether legitimate or not legitimate organization, group of people working together to achieve a singular goal. Now, development, there's no better way to describe development than the simple terms we're going to be putting here for me. We have other ways, but development, when we talk of development, it's just like nurturing, making a particular uh, skill grow, like trying to build competence, trying to enlarge people, trying to enrich people. That is just to me what development is. But I still have some definitions to back it up. So I read a lot and uh, most of the keywords I was able to deduce from the articles I read online, I was able to deduce that development is the implementation of practices, system and techniques in a bit to drive a change. The goal of which is to modify an organizational performance and culture. Then I have another definition here that is speaking to a more recent uh, definition of an uh, the uh, updated business encyclopedia. That is 2021 edition. So more recently, work on organizational development has expanded to focus on aligning organizations with their rapidly changing and complex environments through organizational learning, knowledge management, and organizational norms and value transformation. That is another definition from the latest edition of Business Encyclopedia. And then in my own opinion, like I've said earlier, I see an organizational development simply as a process of optimizing resources to achieve a common goal. When I'm talking of resources, human and non-human, fixed asset, current asset, inventories, anything you call it, provided it is under the organization to achieve a common goal, it is still resources. So let's see the elements of organizational development. Elements though, in, uh, when we are mentioning organization, we are speaking to people. We are mentioning, we are basically speaking to people. We are mentioning people. So, but in the course of this uh, organizational development, when we are mentioning people, we are speaking, we are describing the competencies, the skills, the capabilities, knowledge base, and expertise of the people working in the organization. And also, the elements, we have climate. When we are talking of climate here, we are not talking of the uh, geographical weather. We are talking of the mood or unique personality of an organization, which includes attitudes and beliefs that influence members 
employees experience and collective behavior. So what is influencing? What is the, what is the atmosphere like? What is driving people to perform? What is the mood? What is the tone of the organization? The tone determines the climate of the organization. Now we are talking of culture. The generic definition of culture still sits in this case. When we're saying culture, we are just basically saying the general ways of life of people. But that is basically for social studies and for civic education. But in this context, culture is applied. When we are talking of culture, the deeply seated norms, what do I mean by norms? Norms, customs, what is acceptable? Ethics, the guides and principles of that, oh, this is the right thing to do. And the code of conduct, the code of conduct are embedded in the policies, staff and group, and the procedures, SOPs that we have in our organization. Then core values, for every organization with a vision and mission, there must be a driving force. And that driving force is the core values. What are the core values? For example, we can, an organization can have integrity, um, helping one another, collective co collectivity, co-creation, democratization, and all. All these are values which drive performance in an organization. And behaviors that members share. What is the behavior like? Behavior. And don't forget, under this culture too, we can have the culture of feedback through information processes, but I, I, I may not be able to put everything in this presentation, but I would like to mention some. Culture of feedback, how, how information flow from the bottom to the top and from the top to the bottom. So all these things are what is embedded in culture and in an organization. The strategies, when we're talking of strategies, we are just speaking to the planning methodologies, which is identifying problems, Identifying problems, plan actions, negotiate change, and evaluate process. So all these things are the elements of organizational development. And uh, before we proceed to relationship between an uh, organizational development and design, before we proceed to organizational design and development, I want us to please, uh, I need insight. Who can describe maybe briefly in just a sentence the relationship between organizational design and development? I need someone to. Hello, are you there, please? What is the relationship between organizational development and the design, organizational design and development? Okay, Akorede, could you please tell us? Please unmute and tell us. Akorede, you raise your hand. Okay. If, if nobody is talking, let's proceed to save our time. I think I'm having issue with my screen. Oh, sorry, it was a mistake. Okay, sorry, it, was it was a mistake. mistake. It was a mistake, yeah, yeah. Okay, but I have another participant raising up ends. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Okay, my name is Muda Shuri Ismaila. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ismaila. Could you please contribute? My pleasure to this platform. Ma, concerning, based on what you have discussed so far, Ma, can you hear me, ma? Yes, clearly. I think you, you asked of what is the relationship between organizational divine, design and organizational development. Yes. I think two of them have a symbiotic relationship. Yes. In the sense that design will come along the development. Without, yes. without, develop, without design, there can be development of an organization. Yes, why thank develop, you. Why development on its why design on its own can never achieve can never achieve its cause. There must be a way in which you must measure at which whatever you have designed the organization has been achieved in time of development. I think two of them 
they cannot be separated. They must work in line for any organization that is intent to achieve their aim and objective, ma. All right, thank you so much, uh, Ismaila, for that contribution. That was enlightening. Okay, and um, let's move on quickly. Again, I I don't know if we can list out activities of the first first assignment. Let's list out activities of organizational design based on the definition, based on the concepts. What are the activities that could involve that could be involved in uh, organizational design? When I'm talking of activities, I'm just I'm talk, I'm addressing our HR activities. What we our HR value chains. Please, I want to see our comment in the chat box. Thank you, Fumila Yalabi. The relationship is that organizational design is the art, uh, architecture of an organizational development, optimize the structure. And thank you so much for that contribution. Please, I want to see our, what are the activities? Let's list out activities involved in organizational design. I want to see our comment in the chat box, please. Hello, are we there? Oh, Mr. Olu, hear me, please. Am I audible? It's like people are not getting me. Yes, they are audible. They are typing, I believe. Okay, sir. Okay. Amaka said training. Mm, okay. Thank you for that. I need another contribution. Please. Uh, we don't have the all night or what the okay workforce planning. Thank you, I did that for you. That's a very good point. Workforce planning, yes. I need another contribution. Formulation of policies, yes. Reporting relationship, framework development, wahoo, talent management. Thank you so much for that contribution. Now let's move to activities involved in development. What are the activities in, okay, framework, uh, Monisola said, framework development, yes, 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 that's a very good one. Adi Aga said, performance management, mm, okay. Stating clearly the objectives of the organization, mm, okay. Mudashiro, thank you. So now let's move to activities of organizational development. What are the activities involved in organizational development? Please, I need you to give me expo because right now I don't even, I can't even remember what I have in my next slide. I'm banking on you, everyone. Okay. Development, mission, and vision of the organization. Thank you, Olushola Babalola. Mm -hmm. Please, I need contribution stating the vision and the mission clearly. Yes, that's development. Yes. Please, I need more. I need more training and development. Wow. Anna Zodo, thank you. That was a good one. Then Uamaka is a core values, yes. Communication, yes. Organizational policy and ethics, good. So thank you so much, everyone. We've all contributed well. In a bit to fast track our time, let's move to the next slide, please. So when we are talking of design, I'm having issues, my screen, zanging. Okay, when we're talking of uh, organizational design and development, the first, the first um, item I have as the activity on that design is workforce plan. Before we can say, oh, we want to have an organization. Okay, we should be able to say, this is an organization, we want to be producing bread. Okay, if we want to produce bread, just like uh, what, who are the people we need to produce this bread? What are the expertise they need to bring in? What is going, what is, because it's a food, we need to be, we, we need to be producing round the clock. That is shift, 
we have to, uh, we, have, we, will, we will likely have money afternoon and night shifts, the shift pattern and all. So all this and the department, which we need to, as much as we are having the production department, we are thinking of the finance department that will manage the income. We are thinking of and, and expenses. We are thinking of the internal control that will sustain the quality of the bread we are producing. We are thinking of the quality, health and safety to ensure adherence to food safety and all. So as we are thinking, okay, this is the product we want to be producing bread. We are first, the first thing we are doing is we are drawing the plan for the workforce we are going to be bringing in, the people we are going to be bringing. That's where the structure comes into the place. We have organogram and all. Then the second, we'll be thinking of line of reports. Okay, who would who will report to who? That should be clearly defined. Then growth and survival plan. Because it, the mission of every small organization is uh, every organization is to start small and continue to grow till God knows when. So in as much as the world exists, the continuity and growth plan. So that should be on ground, the sustainability of the business. It should be clearly stated for all stakeholders of the organization to see. And also policy and procedures. There must be policies and procedures for the production of the bread and also policies guiding every activities of the employees in the organization. Then there must be a, a well-defined communication channel or channels. All this should be clearly communicated. Uh, I'm trying to move the chat box, okay? Okay, so after the communication channel, we should try to look into the total reward plan. When I say total reward plan, I'm speaking to the totality of compensation, benefits, and recognition an employee may receive. From an organization in from an organization. So total reward plan. This includes even the quality or uh, the amount the company is going to spend on the learning and development. Because you will not train a manager, you will not incur so much cost on, on training an officer as much as you will train a manager who is already a talent. We are in an organization, this is where it comes to play. Total reward distinguishes a talent from resources. Talent, simply put in economics, is capital. So investment on capital generates interest. A, a talent will yield better than a resources. A resources, a resources, a resource is dispensable. Resources are dispensable in the process of production. Trust human being to our competency, our skills, if not sharp, sharpened, can be dispensable. So that is where we have reward plan. How do we reward the factory workers? How do we reward the production managers? How do we reward everyone in the bread factory? Then operations technology. Gone are the days that we drive human being manually. Now everything is digitalized and the technology is taking place. So for the fact that it's a bread factory it does not mean that we should be bringing in people to come and knead the bread. Uh, manually, we need technologies. We need the mixer. We need the uh, flour. We need the flour sieve. We need all those technologies to be in place for the operation to be to go smoothly and faster. Then again, when we are designing our bread factory, we are looking at the environment. There's what we call competitive ad advantage when we are establishing a particular organization. But that competitive advantage, if not carefully examined again, can work against a particular product. So you have to look, okay, there are factories around this place, but how many of them are producing the same thing I'm producing? We should, while designing our, our the structure of an organization, we, every organization looks into the location. The, the external, the personal, the political, the environment, the legal, and no, whatever you call it, in personal, all these personal factors, they come into play here. And also the location come into play when we're discussing environment in organizational design. Now, Anon, let's move to the activities involved in development. Like I said, the first thing that should resonate when we mention development is learning. Learning is the gateway for innovation. The only way through which an organization can communicate innovation, can evolve, can be creative, is to keep learning. 
we evolve by learning. So that's the first thing learning, learning and development. Then what do I mean that by this TMC? Training, mentoring, and coaching. That is activity. It's very key in an organization to manage talents, training, mentoring, and coaching. Then we have knowledge management. What do I mean by that knowledge management? The information in the organization, how do we manage it? What is the flow pattern like? How do we organize it? Do how do we communicate information from the bottom uh, from the top management to uh, to the bottom to the people on the ground floor on the floor at factory floor also? So knowledge this is where knowledge knowledge management comes into play. As much as the factory workers are factory workers, they can have their own ideas that they want to contribute to the organization. This is where uh, a, comp a company should be open to suggestions, collaboration, co-creation, the design thinking. This is where design thinking is very crucial because it drives innovation faster. The, uh, a floor member of an organization can bring in as much as good innovation as the manager. And it's, it's, it, it promotes inclusion. And it is true development that will drive this culture in an organization. We drive the culture of knowledge management in an organization. Then change management. Change management, again, is disrupting existing system to create a new system. The o o ODD is benchmark on change management. So that, that is very, very obvious that, oh, when we, are, when we want, if we want a new innovation, then we need to look into the existing system find a fault in the existing system. If there's no fault in the existing system, there will be no need for innovation. So, and then onboarding. How do we onboard people? Onboarding, this is the process of, this is the process of making people get uh, adaptable to the culture of the organization. If the, if the culture is not well communicated right from the onset during onboarding, everything will be wrong. This is where development comes into place. It is a, it, onboarding. Um, that onboarding, um singular onboarding, um might be a reason for an employee to be engaged or disengaged early and leave early or stay in the organization. The first impression they say last longer. So, and it is one of a, uh, one of the key activities of development in an organization. Then competency level. What do I mean by that competency level? What is the level of expertise? What are the qualities of people working in an organization? It's not just about recruiting people. Who are the people who are handling the process? Because the people are in the process will determine the revenue, the profit, the loss, the costs, and all. So competency level, development determines it. Because if the competency level is low, we use development to drive it up. And if there's not developmental plan in place, like learning developmental plan or so, talent management plan, we might, not, we, might, we might not be getting it right in our organization. Then performance management, performance management evaluating people performance. If there's no measurement, if there's no metric for measuring people performance, people might work and miss. So there should be a clearly stated key performance indicators, key result areas that we uh, that that we align every performance to the organizational goal. And performance management begins from cascading the vision down to every activities in the organization. We we'll still go that to that as we proceed in this uh, training. Then talent metrics. What do I mean by that talent metrics? Uh, talent metrics is still what I mentioned as uh, key performance indicators. Like for recruitment now, we have the turnaround time, we have the quality of hire, we have the sourcing channel efficiency, we have um, the recruitment cost, what is the attrition rate, what is the uh, turnover rate, uh, all those things are talent metrics. Then that will take us to the relationship between uh, design and development. I've mentioned the activities involved in design and I've mentioned the activities involved in development. Now let's see if these two are combined together, what, what will happen in an organization? We have high return on investments. Then we have higher employer, uh, employer value proposition. Employee engagement will come into place. Ownership, everybody will have this sense of ownership, process ownership that, oh, this is my job without being cajoled to do it, without uh, we, whether uh, the line manager is watching or not, everybody is taking ownership for their 
be, for their position and they are acting appropriately. Everybody is committed to their responsibilities. Then the culture inclusion. Take it for an instance, when I mention knowledge management, if we manage knowledge very well, we'll be able to promote inclusion in an organization because every member of the organization will feel included. When, and how do we promote inclusion is through our, uh, what we call staff forum, staff forum meeting, our uh, village meeting and so on and so forth. So this promotes inclusion, all these singular acts. When you see village meetings, staff forums, they are all developmental plans to sustain the structure the design of the organization. Then acculturation, what do I mean by acculturation? That's adaptation into the company's core values and norms. So then innovation, we have a lot of new ideas. If we combine design and development together, then the competency level will be enlarged. Then for the competitive edge, the company will be doing well compared to the competitors. If we combine the efficiency of design to the effectiveness of development. Then we have efficacy, which is the outcome that I have just highlighted. Now let's move on to the process of organizational design and development. So I've summarized this process to six easy steps. So when we are thinking of organizational design and development, it should not come, come to us as one very big word. It's just a simple step. But the only thing is we need to have a solid, we need to have a solid structure, like I've said, a structure, structure that I mean, before you can destruct a particular structure, you have to have an existing structure in place. So that structure are the people that will help promote it. So let's see how it goes in the six steps to uh, ODD. The first we, we have is an organization. This is the organization, as I'm representing the organization as a, uh, rubrics. So the first is the organization, an existing structure, like I've mentioned. So under the existing structure, what comes first is the vision. The vision, um, the vision of an organization and strategies might be in existence before we, we introduce this ODT. But we need to look at the current business reality to see what is happening. I'll still explain this as we proceed in this. Uh, interaction. Then after vision, what's next? Organizational design. After design, knowledge management. Then after knowledge management, we have performance management, followed documents and structured documentation. Then we now have a learn and develop. Then in between this, we have monitoring and evaluation, which is a continuous process. Is a monitoring and evaluation a continuous process to drive every activity of the ODT. Now let's explain this concept fully. The first is the vision and strategy of the organization. And this can be better communicated to, if we have an existing structure and we are distorting, we can have this, uh, a forum meeting where we communicate the strategy, the, vision of the organization to, the, uh, to every member of the organization so that everybody will know what is, what is driving them and what they are driving. Vision is like a bulb, a lighting bulb. It, it enlightens people to align their performance uh, performances and activities to the organizational goal. If the vision and strategies are not clearly communicated, people won't know what they are driving and what the, vision, what the goal is. So, Light the way by communicating the strategy while you are developing your ODD plan process. By analyzing the factors influencing the organization, we will be able to set a valid vision and mission. Ensure that all the decisions made are properly aligned with what we as an organization hope to achieve. That is for the vision and strategy, then followed by um, organizational design. So organizational design, once the vision is clearly communicated, let's have a, an organogram. Okay, who is reporting to who, like I've said, using the elements of the organizational design to know how to develop an organogram. We are, when we are developing an organogram, we are also segregating duties through clearly communicated job roles and responsibilities because this will help drive efficiency. And also doing organizational design, we should learn to manage stakeholders. If we don't know how to recruit stakeholders to buy into the vision 
I'm telling you, we may not be able to move ahead because we cannot work in solitude as a child department. We need to buy every, every uh, member of the organization. We need to buy finance. We need to buy internal control, buy, uh, buy business intelligence, everyone to see the vision. That is when we have the structure and design in place. Then uh, knowledge management. This is the forming foundation. We should make the employee feel that they are progressing and growing with the organization. Enough information to participate fully in the old organization design and, dis and development process. Then again, as much as we are making information flow, we should watch out for leakages because if vital information are leaked to competitors, that may work against the organization. So as much as we are planning to restructure, to develop, a div to have a developmental plan, we should be conscious of information leakage to have a competitive edge over others. Then document structures. This structure is what we call our policy, our SOP standard of operational procedures. Then if it's a factory work, if it's a manufacturing company, we call it a um, ops alert, operations alert on the world and all. So all these things should be properly documented. For you Don't forget I used bread factory initially as an example. And for this bread factory, you have to have everything documented from the policy, the procedure for producing, the for mixing the bread. And apart from that, we should have operations alert, which will be strategically placed at, on the factory, uh, on the factory walls for um, the operatives to see as they work every day. So having a step-by-step -step guide instructions that act as guidelines for employees through each and every work process, then aim to achieve efficiency, quality output, and uniformity of performance while reducing miscommunication and failure. Again, lay the foundation for a solid performance management program through the organization. So that is how to document a process in the process in the in, in the structure rather. Why documenting the structure from from attraction to exit should be clearly communicated in the policy. And now we don't even have exit again. Is talent management is three sixty degree because we have boomerang employees. What do I mean by boomerang employees? Those who left the organization are coming back to take higher roles. So we should know how to manage all those things, and they should be clearly communicated in the policy, in the company structure. And please uh, help me mute him. Okay. Now, um, we should. I can't see clearly. I'm sorry, please. I'm trying to see what I put here. Please, who can read the screen for me? Um, part of my screen is being covered, kind of. Okay. I can read it. Okay. I please do. The knowledge base. Okay. Learn and what? develop. Okay, learn and develop. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, once we've identified uh, our key key people in the organization, once we've identified the structure, once we, we know what we want to do, then we go ahead and design a learning plan. Okay, that learning plan we, is, 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 a very, is a very plan for continuity because we need to know that, oh, okay, for this particular point in time, this is, these are the skills and competencies required to drive the organization. Like the, the skills that are necessary in 2019 are no longer relevant now. They were no relevant during COVID and the skills that were relevant during COVID are no longer relevant now. And I'm telling you by next year, in this talent war, the skills that are relevant now will not be relevant again. So that is why we need to keep learning and developing plans to make people progress. That is where career management comes into play. So, and how can we do this in our small organizations? We can do this by, our little knowledge sharing, job rotation, make where don't, nobody should be an island in an organization that, okay, if this person should go, there will be no replacement. To encourage learning and development, we should try to rotate duties, job sharing, task rotation, knowledge sharing, uh, all these things will empower us faster. Then uh, we should learn to invite the culture of coaching and mentoring, not until when we pay 
an external facilitator who should develop faculties within the organization, the talent should learn to train the resources. The resources might not necessarily be the ones that are entry level, because we have some entry level DJs that are very wise now and very intelligent. That's why we need to have a co-collaboration platform in the organization where everybody can contribute. Everybody can feel inclusive because the knowledge a Gen Z we give might supersede and be more quality than that of in, uh, baby boomers or whatever we call it, the older ones in the organization. So we should be inclusive as much as possible. And we should have a learning plan, coaching for performance, learning and development, training, mentoring, and all. Before we can explore the uh, sending an, an employee for external training, we should have exhausted all the internal trainings, all the internal methods that are cost effective. We should have standard learning plans. So the main way for employees to be productive and achieve goals is by providing them with opportunities for continuous learning. Continuous learning, like I said, job rotation. If I'm now that I've mastered recruitment, I'm having eyes on learning and development. I'm thinking, I know performance management. So we should we should encourage employees to switch roles in an organization for continuous learning. Then we should identify and create an employee-centric process where learning is an ongoing event that the entire company is part of. Then we should provide both the individual and organizations as a whole with benefit that makes the cost and time in what's why. So this is where alignment comes into play. We should learn to align the individual goals to the organizational goals. In the first instance, if my personal goal is not aligned with an organization, you won't see me working there. I reject offers a lot because once I check that, oh, what is the growth plan about? What would this organization give me the uh, the growth I am envisaging? If I'm not seeing it, then I won't go. So initially, before we we even plan our ODD, we should be able to get in the individual goals through to learning analysis. We should do a learning needs analysis, competency mapping. We should do competency mapping, learning needs analysis to make sure that. Everybody's goal in the organization is aligning with the overall organizational goal. Why we are designing our organizational de design and the development plan. Then performance management. This is um, at this point, we should we are training, we are learning, we are recruiting. We should be setting key performance indicators that will drive people performance. And this key performance indicator is not coming from every, it's coming from the organizational goal, cascaded down to every activity in the organization. So we should be able to measure what really matters. And we measure, some organizations are measuring activities, they are measuring their services, why they should be focusing on productivities. We will be able to drive organizational design and development with this. We should be able to measure what really matters. Then the business model is visualized in a strategy map, which helps managers to think about cost and effective relationship because the different strategy, because uh, between the different strategic objectives. If we have a cost and benefit analysis of every activities in an organization, we should be able to attach Naira and Kobo to everything we are doing in an organization. Then everybody will learn to perform better. If we have a platform where performance, outstanding performance are being recognized and um, are being recognized. And uh, then we have a platform for identifying top performers, those who are evolving and those who can do better and those who are struggling. Then we will have a very broader uh, organizational plan for development and design. Because everybody will be working towards a particular course. Those who are struggling, we want to improve. Those who are performing well, we want to keep doing well. And they will be innovating, evolving. And top performance, the more they innovate, the closer they are to becoming capitals. So, and I, like I said, capitals yield interest. Is a viable, it, it, capital is a viable investment. So when you invest on it, you get your interest. Then, um, aligning individual employees' day-to-day -day actions with strategic business objectives. It's not just about coming to take attendance in an organization, coming to an organization to mark attendance and they're okay to show face, to make noise and let people know that, oh, this person is in the office today. What is, what are, what is everybody doing to match up with the company's expectation? 
to match up with the company's goal. There should be a performance management system driving everyone. Without which organizational design and development might not properly managed. Then we have a, please, I need someone to read. Yeah, monitoring and evaluation. Thank you so much. So you can see that when I was uh, showing us the organizational design and process, when I was showing us the organizational design and process, I did not put monitoring and evaluation anywhere. I did not put it as number one, number two, number three, because it's a continuous process. We can see here it's a continuous process. So for everything we are doing, as we are drawing the vision, mission, and core value, we are trying to monitor, we are trying to evaluate, to include everybody's participant, and to be sure that, by participation rather, and to be sure that we are achieving the desired goal. That doing organizational design, knowledge management, in everything we are doing, doing organizational design and plan. We should be a development plan. We should be able to keep monitoring consistently and evaluate, and evaluate people's performance, just to be sure that we are on the same track. The monitoring and evaluation is the reason we have line managers. This is the single we, because we need feedback. We need feedback to improve. That is why we need to keep monitoring and evaluating. So, and then that will take us to what's next. We've we've talked. We, we've discussed the concept of organizational design. With, with we've analyzed organizational development and elements, relationship and all. So what's next now? We have the process from the vision to monitoring and evaluation continuously and all. So what's next? What are we going to do as HR department? What are we going to do? Because in every organization, the organizational development, uh, design and development experts are mostly from the human resources department. And how do we how do we sustain this plan if at all we have it in place in our organization? And if we are planning to replicate it in our organization, how do we sustain it as an organization? As a, as a child department, please, I need our contributions. Thank you. Please, can we contribute? How do we sustain organizational design and development plan? How do we sustain it? Should I be calling names? I have the list of everyone here in my phone. Okay, Oluchi, please. How do we sustain organizational design and development plan? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Oluchi. Thank you. Thank you for the session. I think the way we can sustain ODD is by you in, uh, deploying the last slide monitoring and evaluating. As we are um, putting the various items, executing the various items, we should be able to monitor the progress. Are people aligning? Are they, put, are they aligning to the processes, the procedures? Are they aligning to what is expected of them? Then we also evaluate the outcome of those processes we've already implemented. What's going on in the environment? Do we need to tweak? Are there some um, factors we've deployed we might need to um, stop doing or improve on or yes. something like that? So it's just to uh, apply a monitor and evaluate, apply KI. KISS, keep doing, improve yes. on, stop doing, and start okay. doing. And I think that's the way we will we'll improve on our ODD. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Oluchi. Let me read from the chat box. Joel Ogban said, continuous research. That, was a, that, that is very key. Then continuous monitoring and evaluation of employee performance, a continuous research that contains extensive monitoring of process flow. Thank you, Joel. That was a good, that's a good one. So any other contribution, please? 
workforce audit. Yes, that is, if we do workforce audit, we'll be able to know the le learning needs, we'll be able to know the competency level, we'll be able to know e almost everything we need to know. If we keep doing it, ODD process. So basically what drives ODD is the structure and learning and development, basically, because performance management is still annexed to learning and development in such that out out outcome of performance determines what learning and development will be planned on. So everything in human resources is interrelated and is splitted under design and development. When we are speaking of organizational design and development, we are speaking, to, we, we, are, we are moving from human resources management basically to talent management. That is just what I'm saying now with this uh, interaction. Monitor HR trends. You said skills that are relevant now may not be relevant next year. Yes. I think that applies here as well. Yes, 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 yes. I did that, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then Fumila Yalabi said, how we sustain it by monitoring employee growth and training plans and clar clarify the organizational goal for effectiveness, for effectiveness performance, employee audit and all. Thank you so much, everyone. So I have it summarized on just a slide. And this is the slide. How do you sustain ODD? Is to think, keep thinking. When I say thinking, I'm not saying that we should go and be brooding in our house. Strategic thinking, design thinking, then keep planning, planning to make things better. Strategic destructive thinking, how to, how to always find, always look for how to improve a process. And you cannot improve a process by not finding of, you have to, first identify a fault. Okay, I am using Excel for my reports now and it's kind of slow. How can I do it better? Even when the company cannot afford ERP, enterprise management plan, enterprise management uh, ERP plan. So how do I maximize resources to achieve my aim? Then once you identify a true thinking, then plan. Put a plan in place to effect it. Then after that, act. All these plans without acting. If you have a plan, if you have a vision without documenting it, it may not, you may not be able to know how to act on it. Why planning document so that you have key result areas to act on. Then as you are acting, you are growing as HR department. Why do we need to think, plan, act, and grow to continue our organizational design and development. Because whether we like it or not, some organizations were here yesterday and they will not be here tomorrow because the competition is fierce. So you have to keep thinking, planning, acting and growing because you want to stay in the business. If not, if you fail to carry out this first simple plan, then we might push our business out of out of the market. That is it. So, and that will bring us to the end of today's knowledge sharing. Thank you so much, everyone, for your contribution. I wouldn't know if we have if we have questions or contributions and all. Thank you so much, Madam, for your contribution. <laughs> Okay. So please question, answer, question, contribution. Okay. I can see accolades, left, right, and center. I can see appreciation. Okay, Buddha Shiru, you if you are raising up hand, you can. <laughs> background is not there, you know. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the appreciation. Please, I need contribution. I need uh, I need contribution because I want to learn as well. Monisola, I need contribution. I need not. questions, please. Monisola, please unmute and speak. Okay. 
Okay, uh, well done, Ma. Uh, it was an amazing session. I would like to say, you said something about um, recruiting my shareholders. Can you expand on that a bit? How do I get my shareholders? For instance, uh, I have a new business and I'm trying to build structure. I'm trying to put in uh, one or two designs and development plans. How do I recruit my shareholders? Can you share on some methodology that has worked for you? Thank you. Okay. So I stake orders. Stakeholders to recruit stakeholders is very simple. The first thing you have to do, you are the vision convener. You have to sit down, write the vision down. Then look where you are now. Where you want to be is your vision. Where you are is your mission. What are the things you have on ground now that will drive where you want to be? So that's where you examine your competencies while drawing your organizational philosophy. So once you are done, you know where you are and you know where you, you're going, then you go ahead and say, okay, these are the things I need to put in place to be relevant, to be able to achieve, to be able to move from where I am to where I want to be. That's where we have core values. So after the core values, clearly communicated, you have your product already, you have your vision, you have your mission, you have your core values. Then look for people of like minds. I'm always skeptical at sharing your full business proposal with people because of, uh, let me say, intellectual theft. But you can discuss it with people. Learn, uh, if, if, it's a, if it's in the organization as a child department, look for the key stakeholders and share uh, stakeholders in the organization. Taking for an instance now, we are a child. Who are the key stakeholders? If we are not able to buy the people in our team first, to move on to buy the line manager, if I'm a team member, if I'm not able to buy the people in my team to buy into it, I'll be able to communicate it to my line manager. And if it gets to my line manager, I'm able to communicate the vision clearly to my line manager. This is the recruitment process. This is the recruitment process, stakeholders recruitment. So if I'm able to buy my line manager's approval, then I move on to buy my line manager's line manager's approval. The person my line manager is reporting to, and that's how it gets to the MD CEO and all. So that is why it's good to have a design thinking plan in place where you have a prototype, you must have first tested it, you, have, you must have done a small framework to have a prototype that, okay, can this idea work? If I want to introduce this, Take it for an instance now, we want to introduce a, a knowledge sharing session in our organization. You must have tested it. Every MD CEO, as we proceed in an organization, the higher you go, the less information, the less talk they want to, the management wants to hear. So you have to be able to convert everything to profits. Every manager, every MD CEO, every C suit will open their ears when they know that they will get money. They will be able to build their profit revenue from the idea you are bringing on board. So, quantify your ideas to Naira and Kobo once you draw your um, vision, mission, core values, and you communicate it to people. If you're able to do this, if you're able to do this, we'll be able to save the company cost to this tune. We can, we can be able to stop them paying for this particular thing and they, they do this free. All those things, they want to hear problem, they want to hear solution. Before your idea can be bought, you need to do a cost benefit analysis to know if we do this, what will be the benefits? That is it. I hope I've been able to answer your question, Monisola. Hello, Monisola, are you there? Have I been able to answer your question? I think there's another question on the chat box from Fumilaya Labi. The question says, what about if there is ODD in an organization, but the employees are dissatisfied with the process? What can be done? Okay. If the employee are dissatisfied, that, that means for there's no alignment between employee goal and the organizational goal. And there's nothing you can do. You can't please everyone in an organization. Once you have, if you are lucky to have 70% buying, the 30% manage them. 
manage them. You can't have everybody's buying an organization, but it becomes a red flag when the majority are kicking against it. That means the ODD process needs to be reevaluated again, whether they accept or not. As a nature in an organization, whether a new employee wants a plan and stay for five years, we need to review. We need to review, maybe to reinvent. There are some plans that cannot be viable, extend, except after five, beyond five years. So we need to keep reviewing our process, monitoring, evaluation. Okay, why are they disgruntled? Let's carry out an analysis. Let's do an employee experience survey to know why they don't like the ODD process or why they are not supporting it. So this employee experience survey, we open our eyes to what they really want. We'll be able to match the expectation of the employee with the organizational goal. Is that answered? Please let me know. Thank you. Any other question, please? So uh, are we all fine? Are we all fine with my explanation and all? OK, I'm seeing something there. So I'm seeing, OK. OK, somebody is sharing a, uh, a material with us to read. For Lucia Olua Femi, please, everybody go to your chat box to click on the link to read further. Thank you, for Lucia, for that contribution. I really appreciate it. So contribution question before we call it a day. So perhaps Ajayi, you can unmute and speak. Yes, you can say something, please. Please say something. Hello, Bob. Go on. Hi. Hi. How are you guys doing today? We are very fine, sir. Thank you for coming online. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, if 30% of the people who are not uh, happy with what you are doing, organizational development, if they are senior managers, they can derail your plan. Yes. And in order not to derail your plan, you probably want to create an opportunity to meet them one, one for one and to sell, to sell the plan to them, to see what they stand to gain, to see how much, of, how much of what you plan to do will impact and help them to sustain and probably you know, achieve some growth in their various sections or departments. So building relationships, it's a key part of organizational development and design. You have to, particularly with senior managers and top management, you want probably everyone in senior management to be part of and to support and to work with you and to sweat with you if you really want to succeed 100%. If they're not sweating with you, if they're not following you, and if they're not committed or devoted 100% to what you are doing, they will derail you. So think about a way to integrate all of these people to engender a, a clear rapport and relationship. And by giving them assignments along the way and getting them active is the best way to achieving that. Speaking from experience, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I would like to add one of the things to what you said. Every management will see ODD as a disruption. They will see it as a disruption and nobody wants to be challenged. There's no way innovation, once an innovation is coming, it will definitely render an existing knowledge, whether less quality or totally irrelevant. And if the top managers are banking on the existing knowledge, the knowledge that the company has been using to, to drive for years, and you are coming with ODT that will bring about entirely new change, they might see it as threats. They might see this change as threats. So they might, they, may, they might revolt. It's normal for people to revolt changes. But that is just like Bab said, would you keep buying stakeholders? Try to let them see the benefits. Then let them be is inclus inclusive. Let them be inclusive. Let them be let them participate in it. Let them be part of it. 
Don't let us bring it out of the blue. That's why co 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 collaboration comes into play. I wish we'll still have a, a, a day to that me and Mr. Ade you know, will bring in an expert to teach us design thinking. So that is design thinking drives the process. We buy people's idea, democratization, where it is democracy, people are bringing in the ideas and we are, we, are, we are seeing people's idea working in the real time. So it will make people trust the process. You cannot bring a process I'm not aware of and as, expect me to implement it as a top manager. So that is where vision communication is key and stakeholder, uh, stakeholder buying. Thank you. Any other contribution? Thank you so much, Mr. Babs. That's You're amazing. welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mr. Babs, I suspect we'll feature you early next year. If you're open, please let me know. Honestly. Send me a private chat, please. Um, Any topic of your choice. I'm just I, I'm just in um I'm just a guest here. And um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I live in Canada. So <laughs> okay. All right. Much. When that time comes, thank you. Right. Cheers. Thank you so much. Yes, Ahmad, we can see your hands up. Would you like to ask a question? Shed some insights or add, contribute to the discussion. You can unmute, please, Ahmad. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Please, my question. I I first want to appreciate the presenter, Fayemi. We did a very wonderful job. Thank you so much, Mr. Oluyemi. Happy birthday to you once again. My question is this ODD of a team. I work in the public service. And most times, can you hear me? Yes, clearly. And most times you are trying to talk about new things and HR. Practically, HR is not something that has found its place in public service, rather, they will say administration. So I don't know how can this thing, all these concepts we have been learning here and we have been discussing in other fora be useful in public service such that you know public service is supposed to be a regulator for all private sectors and with that there is a very huge knowledge gap so what we are seeing there is a kind of regulatory capture when you talk something that is in existence now they will tell you this is the way it has been done since we got the public service from our colonial masters such that there is a very uh, I resistance to one of these things. So how can you uh, give us some insights to correcting all these anomalies? Thank you. Okay. I didn't get your question properly, please. I don't know if you can summarize it. I do. I do. I, do. I understand. So uh, I believe um, Amai is speaking from a public sector perspective. But just before I respond, Please, the link that was shared earlier, we have gotten feedback that it may be suspicious. Please do not click on the link, all right? Please do not click on the link. We've gotten one or two feedback from people who have already tried it as this call is going on. Thank you to the person who shared it. I'm sure the intentions were genuine, but please do not click on the link or click on the link at your own risk, okay? Thank you so much. You will notice it was not shared by any of the admin of this or co-host of this call. Okay, but again, thank you to that person. So what Ahmad is saying is that in the civil service, for example, things change very slowly. So if, for example, you are in HR and you are trying to do organizational design and development, because of the machinery of the civil service, especially in Nigeria, if you are not careful, you may almost be you know, a, a big one. And the, the thing is, the way the civil service structure works, it may almost take some legislative action to adjust certain procedures. And, and, and we appreciate and we understand that because if things are changing too frequently or every now and then, the stability of the government in, in, in itself will be in doubt. So look at one of the nomenclature you have at a very senior level in government. You have permanent secretary, permanent. Of course, we say no condition is permanent. But for our colleagues here who are in the civil service, that should not say you should resign to fate and not try to propose changes. Of course, you may now realize that these changes may not be effected in two weeks or in one month. So you can, especially if you are there for the long term, articulate 
your issues, articulate your solutions, articulate your, your, your what you call it, your proposals. Try and send it to the right channel, to as senior a person as you can. And if you can get a sponsor internally, surely but slowly, you'll be able to, to get some, some traction. But make sure you think deep, you think wide. Also, you may need to consult. Sometimes I may have a brilliant idea. By the time I talk to four, five, six different professionals and they share perspective, it may not be as brilliant after all. Or they may even enrich it further and make sure that all angles to my contribution have been covered so that when we push it to that top level, it will get warm reception and the necessary adjustments can be made. Again, it's a game of perseverance. So don't expect mountains to move yes. in GP because of the process of the context we are talking about, which we really, really appreciate. Thank you, mm. thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So, and don't forget, uh, Mr. Babs Ajay mentioned that to make your stakeholders buy into your ideas, you have to let them know the benefits and you must have test run it in your mind and see that it will work. Any idea, any ODD process that will not bring in return on investments or profits or capacity development might naturally be kicked against. So as much as possible, we should, when we want to implement a particular change, we should as well state the benefits. I'll say in monetary terms, in percentage, in figures. Okay, if I if we introduce, they will be able to optimize the process by over thirty percent, and thereby uh, increasing our turnaround time to our uh, to our clients by uh, maybe forty percent or ten percent or thereabout. Let's be specific. Let's be smart with it when we are doing it. So it it is measurable, it is attainable, and we know that it's realistic and it's time bound. If we have a vision that is not having time, we are not putting time bound on it. It may not be. Uh, realizable so as much as possible let's be smart when we are communicating with the top management and for ODD to thrive it's the communication the, the vision buying the stakeholder buying must be from top top to the bottom though we, we communicate it with our team first then the communication will come from the top management to to the to the lowest to the lowest member of the society of the organization as much as possible so thank you so much everyone again uh, do we still have any questions before we move on to what next for today, for tonight? All right. I'd like to thank you most sincerely, Mrs. Okoyemi Wakolo, for this excellent presentation. Thank you for sharing so generously. we also like to thank everybody that joined this call from the beginning and to the end, and everyone who either asked a question or helped to shed insights and light with respect to any of the questions or comments asked there. I also like to thank everyone who contributed very generously on the chat box. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. We like to say that at this point, we'll be bringing today's webinar to a close. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you at subsequent editions. Thank you and good night to everyone. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much, everyone, for coming online. Bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye.